So I am going to show you guys how I'm stretching a paper for a finished painting size of 18 by 24. Um, we're going to stretch this one using water color paper tape. But first I have to get my dimensions right. I'm going to paint a, a finished painting that's 18 by 24. And I want two inches on both sides, not, uh, not only to add, you know, make room for the tape or have enough room for the tape, but also to tape it to the board, but also to um, do a finished edge tape so that I have a nice clean white edge um, after I'm finished painting. So I'm going to measure the paper right now. This is a full sheet of watercolor paper. And I am going to measure this as 22 by 26. So standard watercolor paper full sheet is 30 inches wide by 22 inches high. So that means if I want to get, you know, if the paper size 22 by 26, I'm just going to take off four inches from one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark off four inches all the way down. And I'm going to just do a white pencil dot, like the three dots. Um, do that all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. And then what I'll show you is a great way. I'm mean, actually, bummer, I should have done it on the other. Well, it's on the other side too. The, um, watermark is in here for the paper for arches. But that's not going to be in my painting anyway, so that doesn't matter. So I am going to do this all the way down, and then I'm going to show you how to tear it so that you have a nice pulled edge still. So I've got that all the way down. So now I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to fold it over. Just make a nice crease here. It's really quick, heavy paper, so you've got to be really careful. But I am going to be making this. This okay. is harder for me today because my hands aren't working like they normally do. Good start. Just for now, I'm going to take the paper. Okay, that. I actually have a boning tool that I like to use for this. Normally, if you do this and you have a boning tool, I highly recommend you use it, which I forgot where I put it. So, guess what? I'm not going to use it right now. Oh, that stinks. All right. Let's see. I'm going to actually look for it for a sec. So, hold on. Okay, so I found my boning tool. Right here that I'm going to use. I've got my boning tool, so I'm just going to. This is how I, instead of using scissors when I'm resizing paper, 
This is how I do it. I just, I just like that somewhat of a deckled edge to it. This is what they call a deckled edge right here. This is a, this right here is a machine cut edge, but these two sides here are the deckled sides. Okay, so I'm doing that. I'm going to turn it over. Turning it over. And I'm going to do it again on this side. looks really nice like if you're gonna some people like to float their watercolor painting in a, a frame instead of putting it under a mat they like it floated on top of a full mat and when you have deckled paper especially if it's deckled on all sides it's such a beautiful way to display your artwork one more time it's, it's, when you do this, it almost basically cuts itself because what you're doing is you're breaking apart the copper, the copper, the cotton fibers that are that make up this paper. So I'm gonna do one more, and then we're gonna tear. doing this so I can get my finished size to get it ready for an 18 by 24. Okay, Let me one more. One more go. All right, so now yeah, that's done there. You're going to take your ruler, okay, you're going to take the ruler your straight edge, a nice strong straight edge. And you're gonna put it up to that crease and you're gonna hold it and you're just gonna tear into that edge like that. Taking it, I have a little bit of this left right here because it tore a little bit in the even. That doesn't bother me right now. Maybe I'll trim it just a little bit. And I'm going to put my scrap away. Oh, a little, a little bit of. Okay. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll get rid of that. It's a beautiful day outside. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon. Two inches on both sides. So this is 26. Okay. So I want to mark off. This is going to be 18 by 24. So I'm going to mark off an inch off of this side. Okay. So actually, I did not leave myself enough room. I should have just done two. This is four inches. Okay. So okay, so that's getting four inches that way. Feet from that to there to here. Okay. And then I'm gonna mark off two and four again here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but So now between here and here, my finished image size is 24, okay? So that, come up here, here, 24, come up an inch, and there, and this line, and one more down 
out here. There, and this is there. Or up there. Now I'm going to go down here. This board is not actually big enough, so let's see. I'm 24. Point down. Once you put water, if you draw something on your watercolor paper and then you put water on it, it actually sets the drawing into the fibers of the paper. So if you don't want that to happen, you're going to want to make sure that you do your drawing after you stretch your paper. Sometimes if it's a nice light drawing, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, this one. Now, I'm really bad at math. That was not my strong point in school. Not at all. So, it doesn't look straight, but I hope I got too many inches all the way around. So, I'm going to go from here to here and see what happens. 24. That's 24 there. And that is 24 there. Now I want 18, I want 18 inches here, so I'm going to measure from here, let's see, from here to here, 18, oops, no, nope, that's not right, so I have 22, so I can go up 2 inches on both sides, okay, so I'm going to go up 2 because I have four inches to spare, I have 22 inches, so I have four inches to spare. So I'm going to go two, 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 two. Okay. Same thing. I could have done it the other way. Okay. I think it's going to be a little bigger than 18, but if it, do, if it is, that's where your, um, that is where your mat's going to go over, so it's not like super, 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 super critical, because you always overlap when you're matting, so let's see. And they're not going to put a lot of detail that close to the edge, I hope. So, so you can see. So, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to measure from like there to there. Yep, do that. One more. Let's do it from here. Yeah, there. So 18 there. Let's do this. 18. 18. Okay, so I'm going to draw this line first. I'm going to draw this one first. That was. I'm going to draw this off. This off. Oops. 
this is a 2D pencil, so this stuff I like. Actually, this is a D pencil. I like using, um, I don't like using 2D or D because it's too dark when I'm doing this stuff. I like smaller ones. Okay, so I want 18. paper is square either, so Now we have, from here to here, we have 24 right there. Oh, you can't see it. So we have 24 here on that measurement. And then on this measurement, now we've got 18. Okay, so that's our finished paper size. So now I'm going to show you how I stretch this. Okay, go. Okay, so I have some, I got, this is what you're going to need to stretch your paper. You're going to need a sponge or a big, big, fat, wide brush. You're going to need very, very clean water, okay? Then you're going to need your paper tape here, paper tape here, okay, because we're going to be using that on there and or a staple gun like this okay so I'm gonna just pause this for a second and then show you how it's done both ways okay okay so I've got my water here so the first thing we're going to do, either using the brush or the sponge, we're going to turn our sheet over to the back side. Oops, yeah, I just messed that whole thing up, didn't I? Okay, well, we're going to just get our paper nice and really wet. Actually, I'm going to use the sponge because I can get more water that way. I don't know if you can see this, but... I'm going to really, really get the back of my paper a nice bath. I mean, I don't want it so wet that I have puddles everywhere, but you want to get it nice and wet. You want to get it nice and wet. I'm going to release the tension of these cotton fibers in here. Okay, I'm going to get this nice and wet. Yep, nice, nice and wet. That. Getting it nice and wet. My sponge. You gotta have clean water and you gotta have a clean surface because if you don't, you're gonna get paint or dirt on the inside of your paper when you're doing this. Okay, so right now this is nice and wet. Right? Nice and shiny wet. Not shiny. Okay, nice and wet. And then I'm going to 
going to turn it over now. Flip it over. Position it. Position it on your board the way you want it. Move my board. And I want it. I want to make sure that I have relatively lined up, like kind of, you know, it, so I can visualize that. Okay. All right. That looks. I'm going by this measurement here. A little bit more. Oi. A little bit more. I'll just eyeball it like that. I don't want it to be crooked. That's for sure. But that looks that looks good. Okay, now my group. This pencil line is going to be etched in stone, so I don't want it that dark. I'm going to just open it up. See, the paper's wet underneath, so you got to do this when your paper's dry. But just lighten that up so you don't get dark lines there. Okay, so now I'm going back with my sponge full of water, and I'm going to wet it again. So now I'm wetting this front, okay, so I'm releasing that. Some people soak their paper in the bathtub. Or if they have like a large sink, which would be wonderful to have like a full sheet size sink. They let their paper soak in the tub for like one or two minutes. They don't want to soak it too long because then all the sizing will come out of the paper, I've been told. So, so here we have, I'm getting it nice and wet. Okay, nice and wet. Right, both sides. Okay. And we're going to smooth that out as much as possible because already the paper's starting to buckle. Okay. You can see that already. So we're going to just smooth it out already. I had to cut the edges, by the way, in case you're wondering where my decorative edges went. I actually had to cut them because uh, the board that I thought I was going to do this on. Um, was already being used, so I had to use a smaller board, surface board. So, all right, so I think I have this nice and wet now. So now I'm going to take my paper tape that I have, right? So you can either, I can start with this, you can either, you can either start by stapling this in here like this, like, oops, that didn't get to a staple. Oh, what happened? I got staples in here. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? There's staples in there. Don't know why they're not working. Hang on. Let's do that. Oops. Come on, guys. You got to work for me. Okay, that, that, that. There we go. Morning and crew loser. Where's that? Okay. Oops. I think that's what's happening. Is they're turning over on their side. Let's try it. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Actually, I'm going to get more staples really quick. I shouldn't have, have to do this right now because my paper's going to dry in the meantime and I don't want that. But i got to show you how this is done. So, let me get another little staple here and put those in. Okay, where's the staple? All right, there. Let's see if this works now, huh? Let's do this. Oh, still not working. There we go, one. We're going to staple this all the way down, all the way down. Because dogs don't like this. Two, two. There, I'm doing it as close to the edge as I can. Oh, I had a miss there again. Oh, another miss. 
Oh, that's not good with puppies around. Okay. Okay. Shoot. Okay. All right. This works again. I don't know why I'm doing the malfunction again. Man, okay. Okay, so my stapler decided to quit, but you got the idea with this, okay? What you do is you just staple all the way around so that when the paper dries, it's, it's secured enough down to the board so it won't move. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the watercolor paper tape. When you get your paper tape, I have it cut out already measured. And I'm going to just wet the paper tape. Not too much because you don't want the, um, the gum on the paper tape to like dissolve so much that it won't stick. So you just want it nice and sticky. And you're going to place it down. I want a tape edge on this. So I'm taking this. I'm going to tape it like this. I'm going to not tape it. I want a nice tape edge as much as I can. So then you're going to take it and you're just going to smooth it out. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that there's no bubbles and that it's secured to the edge of the paper. And I'm going to do it down at the bottom. You can't see it, but I'm going to be doing the same thing down at the bottom. I'm taking my sponge. You can use a household sponge if you don't have a natural sponge. And I'm going to do that down here as well. And I'm going to take that paper tape. I don't have as much of an edge here, so I'm going to have to go around to the edge of the board. Just kind of take it down that way. Okay. So I'm lining up to my pencil side. Okay. I'm lining it up that way and I'm just going around all the way around now I'm doing my height I'm doing the height of the sides the two sides height sides height sides okay so my hands are getting nice and sticky from this tape which is a good thing that means it's gonna stick have as much room for an edge here so this is a bummer but I want to make sure that I want to make sure that I make sure that that goes all the way down on that paper we don't want we don't want our papers to get so we're going to do that all the way down, and last but not least, the last piece of tape. Okay? So, for those of you guys who know how to do this already, just bear with me. Pretty please. There, this one I have a little bit more room for an edge. Can't see me, but I'm putting it down. Okay, so I am um, got that piece of tape down. Now I'm just going to take my boning knife, my boning knife, just to burnish it down all the way. You can see yeah, my staple showing through. So now what we have to do is let this whole thing dry. And that's going to take some time because it's going to take some time because the paper is super wet. Okay. So we'll come back after it's nice and dry and I'll show you the result. Here we go. Okay, so this all dried. Um, unfortunately, once again, um, I got the paper tape too wet in a spot. I'll show you up here. 
I got it too wet in a spot, so it's lifting up. It's either that or the paper tape didn't have enough because everywhere else it, it was fine, except this one spot right here. So it might be a defect in the tape. I don't know. Um, it happened on the first layer, and then I put a second layer, and the same thing happened again. So I don't know what's going on with that spot. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put um, just a real thin, um, I'm going to come over just real thin with some white painter's tape because I don't want water getting underneath there. So that's what I'm going to do. But other than that, you can see how, um, how smooth the paper is now. There's no, except in that one side, there's no... Uh, ripples or anything else. The paper is nice, almost totally dry. It's just a little bit cool to the touch, which means it's still got a little bit of dampness in it. So um, that's something you guys should know about. But other than that, it's it's looking really nice. So I have a little bit of space left over on the other side right here. There's like about a little more than maybe two third, maybe a third of an inch right here or a half inch even. So I'm going to come over just a little bit on this side with some tape and I'll still have my 18 inches because of this over here. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I apologize about the stapler malfunction. I'm really disappointed about that. I keep trying to figure out what's happening and I can't quite figure it out but anyway but that's the idea of stapling your paper down and it's the same thing you just staple it down when it's nice and wet on both sides you smooth it you know lay it down on the surface smooth it out after you've gotten your water coat and then staple all the way around all four sides let it come to a t completely dry and then um, you'll have your watercolor paper nice and stretched and that means when it gets wet again it'll stay smooth. It won't make all these ripples. At least that's what's supposed to happen. Um, so anyway, thanks guys for watching. And um, I hope I explained stretching watercolor paper. And I will talk to you soon. Take care.